Mariano, how are you really doing? Honestly, when I see myself from the outside, I'm super happy. Because he was, ah, oh, the beautiful Italian guy, now he's getting married, ciao, ciao. <laughs> let's see, you. let's follow someone else, you know, I thought about it. I want to find someone like, you know, my dad found in my mom, like, you know, want to find someone that really, you know, I can build a life with. What makes you this way? I know why I started, I don't know why I'm doing it now. How did somebody that left Italy at 18, get to where he is now. When I was working, whatever I was doing, because I started as a dishwasher in, in London, but I was the best at it, the best. What is the most important thing that you need in a marriage? On your deathbed, what would you tell your family and your kids? And... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. Before enjoying watching this episode, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. I think we're on time, by the way. I was calculating we start on time so I can Perfect. sit with you, my friend. I so, trust you. <laughs> first question is always, uh, Mariano, how are you really doing? Um, I'm good, honestly, uh, considering a lot of different things. But yeah, like uh, if I have to make it, like give one word for all the feelings I have, it's like good, I think it's okay. <laughs> You said considering a lot of things. What do you mean? I mean, there are some things that are like not good, good. Some things are okay. Some things are very, very good. So I think the, you know, uh, as I was saying, like good is a word that describes all of it. Like it's in the middle. So, hmm. um, okay, we ask it differently. If we have a backpack mm -hmm. and you can put all of your emotions in this backpack at the moment, and I take the backpack and I open the backpack, what emotions will I find inside? Well, I think you'll find very nice emotions, honestly, because most of it, it's, it's going to be full with, uh, with, uh, with uh, love. And uh, I'm trying to stay around my family more. Um, so I think most of it, mo most of the backpack will be filled with love, but there's a lot of stress in it as well, because, you know, <laughs> Kids are my my strength right now, but they're also <laughs> probably my biggest stress. So, but uh, you know, considering all the things I was thinking about work and you know all the, the dramas that we have in our head because we have a lot of things to think about, as you I think you can imagine. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what's making it uh, from not good good to very very good. It's uh, probably the love for the kids and the family that is like cheering me up all the time. I guess because we're both entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and. I don't know how many, how much people understand because being an entrepreneur is a, a sexy idea because mm -hmm. you're your own mm -hmm. boss and all of that. Oh, you own your mm -hmm. own time. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just a very trendy idea. It but is. people don't realize how much has to happen behind the scenes for you to own your yeah, time. Yeah. And maybe our family is like a balance for something like that, you Probably. know, maybe or friends. Maybe. Maybe it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's just what we were saying off camera just a second ago. You know, I'm trying to bring the businesses to a lower number because it's taking me too much time. Because family, I would love the family to be a, balance, a better balance. But it's like it, it, I struggle to find a balance, you know what I mean? Because you have commitment to people that work for you, to, to businesses that you started. You know, you don't want to leave stuff undone. So once you start the thing, you want to do it well. Mm. I'm that kind of guy. So... I want to do the best I can in all the things, but at the same time, I want to be the best father I can with my family, better husband for my wife, because, you know, I don't want to take that for granted all the time. So you know, I struggle to find the, the equilibrium in that. It's not, it's not easy, especially being uh, uh, at the same time a 
public figure. I had to be always around smiling and being nice and, you know, take the photos, make the reels and do that. Uh, so it's kind of, what, it's kind of, that's what I was saying. A lot of things. Overall, it's good. But yeah, I mean, I wish I could find a better balance uh, for the family, probably. What is Mariano's balance? Because you talked about, I wish I can find a balance. What is a balance that's good for Mariano? Because each human has a balance. Uh, yeah. And I think each human's balance a different balance in different timing. You know, like uh, right now, probably a few years ago, the balance I have now would have been a good balance because I was very into finding a way that I could sustain my family and myself in a way that I don't have to stress that much to think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to get to that point that you're like, okay, I have the freedom to. But once you have it, as I said, you have commitment, you have stuff that you can just, okay, now I'm good and just I'm gonna leave everything. So right now the balance I have was probably good for the Mariano a few years ago that I had a little bit more, uh, less time to spend with the family because mm -hmm. I didn't have that much of a big family. I mean, I have four kids in five years. So it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a world record, but I mean, we're very <laughs> close to that. Um, so probably, yeah, again, probably way more not me time because honestly my me time is not a very i don't know it's not as precious as the time i would love to spend i don't want to sound cocky or anything it's just you know, my me time is my i feel myself and i feel the better and the most energized when i'm very, really with my kids and with my family even doing stuff that i love because you, know, so, you know i love playing golf and i bring my kids to play golf it's not that we have to stay home and play with the games all the time but i mean uh, that's what energizes me. So probably better balance for me would be spend a little bit more time with that and a little bit less work. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> so. There is a nice uh, thing a, a, a person told me recently. He said, "Either do or don't. There's yeah. no try." Yeah, true. And I'm like, hmm. So I was just gonna tell you. Then we have to do it. No, if that's yeah. our better balance, we have to try to do it. We have to try to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I think uh, as everything, you you do your best and you see what happens, you know, like for work, for the family, for everything, you, you always wish for the best, but you try your best. I mean, uh, as long as you try your best, you don't have, you have no regrets. I try my best for my family. I, try my, I, ju I don't lay back. That's the thing I do. So I, you know, maybe sometimes I don't sleep that much. I don't, you know, I don't really take that much time off. Even sometimes it looks like we try to stay out of social media, even if it sounds weird, but I try to. So, but, uh, you know, I, I try my best to do, to do, to do everything I can. And then yeah, we'll see, you know, if it goes, it goes, God knows. And Mariano's childhood, how was it? Mariano's childhood was very short, I think, because I have, uh, my childhood, if I can say child, do you mean before like the when teenager year? Yeah, 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 or, I don't know, man, because I feel my childhood from 14 to 18. That's what my, where my biggest memories are, because before 14, I don't remember that much, honestly. <laughs> I have mm. a short memory. Uh, but 14, 18 is just four or five years that I spent with my friends, and I got, like, the craziest I could. You know, I have scars all, the, all, all over. I was the craziest kid. I was doing graffiti, skateboard, smoking. I was doing everything I could. You know, I was really trying to make my parents' life the worst I could. So <laughs> I really did that very good. But I had a lot of memories, though. Like, uh, I think my parents really tried to grow me as a, you know, um, a guy that, you know, had to have certain, uh, not logics, but certain, I don't know how you say Values? English, some certain values, exactly. So I really faced life in a, I think, in a different way from all of my friends at that at that time but uh, but it was very short because as soon as I was 18 I started traveling I went to London when I was 18 and then I went to New York and I came back that I was 21 and at 22 I blew up so at 22 and a half I blew up not even six months I was in Italy I started became was becoming this uh, you know uh, fashion guy that I was known all over so it kind of like from that moment on my my you know I can't really say I have a uh, a regular life to tell you know it was a little bit uh overwhelming and 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 a lot of stuff together so it's it's really not easy to <laughs> to describe that but my my that short childhood right there it was it was a, i guess a regular childhood before that i think it was perfect i mean honestly i have no uh, i don't know no complaints my family was amazing i have good memories of what we did together uh, i really felt I wanted to do the same that my family did in the past because I saw them as a, such a high 
um, standard for me because I, I, you know, saw love in my family between my mom and my dad, and that was a very important thing for me. So I really was, you know, even for the position I was, honestly, you know, like I was in a situation when I was 21, I was getting famous, I could have all the girls I wanted, you know, everything I wanted, and I. I never really stood for that. I was like, you know, I want to find someone's like, you know, my dad found in my mom. Like, you know, want to find someone that really, you know, I can build a life with. It. Otherwise, it's, you know, like I'm not even going to waste time, you know, wasting all the time after a girl that I don't know. You know, I never had relationships like not serious relationship for, for that long. I wasn't that kind of guy. But when I found Dele, I thought, okay, she's a nice girl. I mean, we were sharing some similar values. Uh, so I was, uh, I want to say that, I say, because she believes in God, we have like a similar, um, same beliefs. So that was very important for me, uh, and that's what probably drove me to 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 commit to her and have a regular family with her. But, but again, my my probably my standard was my family. So the, I guess childhood was was mm. nice. How um, for somebody like you, who's mm -hmm. a handsome man, a successful man, so it works together. You know, you can be handsome, but not successful yeah. is the problem. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> successful, handsome, uh, I would say very social, you know how to talk to people, and you get a lot of attention. Is that difficult for somebody, because you made a difficult choice for somebody who gets a lot of attention, and you said something nice, you said, I could have any woman, but then I made a decision, no, I want to see how I saw my parents build something. Mm -hmm. It's a big choice and a big commitment for somebody who can say, listen, I want to live my life, I can meet different women, I can have fun, but until when? Mm -hmm. So how yeah. does a man like you make that decision? I think it's a matter of like uh, how I don't know how mm, how much self belief you have at the same time. Like you know, it's uh, on one side it's just you know believing in your uh, principle and your values, and at the same time you need to be a little bit strong because if I can say that honestly, we do we are forced sometimes to make decision based on people's opinions on people likes especially for a person like me i mean i'm on i'm on you know, you know everybody's hands so you know most of the times i find myself thinking oh what is this going to be perceived uh, mm. you know like what is this going to have like what kind of reflection what kind of reaction what kind of result is this going to have even on your personal stuff you think i didn't think about like oh if i show the world that i have a you know girlfriend that i want to get married after a year and a half because i love her that's gonna be you know that like, you know, you know, bye bye because it was uh the beautiful italian guy and now he's getting married ciao ciao <laughs> let's see let's follow someone else you know i thought about it i was like you know that's my life i want to share i mean that's probably the best thing i can have ever have in my life when i show that i was like i'll show it you know many people told me oh bro you know i've been uh, having a, a fiance for so much and never showed it because otherwise, uh, you know, like people would have. I don't know, man. Honestly, I just went with for, with the feeling and I thought it was a nice thing and I did it. But I, I mean, probably, I probably would have been way more. I probably would have grown differently in social media and stuff. I don't know, what's that really matter? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a very, because I would imagine the same um, dilemma. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, do I act single? because I have a big female audience or do I show that you can build a good family because also um, I saw a recent video uh, on Instagram and one friend of mine who's on the show he's married with kids and he's built a very nice unit mm. and he was interviewing another guy and the guy goes I'm 40 plus and he's his friend and he goes I am jealous of you mm. and he's like I am jealous because when I look at the love you've built and the family you've built I'm 40 plus and I want that too. Man. I've lived my life, but now when I look at you, I'm like, so there are men and there are women who will look at Marianne as a different kind of people who are like, you can, even in a, in a very difficult time where people are not committing to relationships, yeah. people are playing around, fooling True. around, cheating, divorce rate is high. Maybe Marianne is actually a good father and a good husband. Maybe she's also a lovely mother. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can have a good life. So you give love hope. 100%. So it's a very different 100%. kind of thing, you know, you can be a role model in that. Not only, okay, I have good looks, but I decide to commit. Of course, of course, you know, that was my goal. I mean, uh, it was a goal. When I say I, I went with the feeling, but it was, it was a thought feeling. Everything I did was, you know, thought very, very carefully since the beginning. And that was thought too. I mean, that was my feeling because I felt it was, that's what was good, you know, like God put me where I am for a reason. I think show the people what I have inside of me it's part of that so i think that was the right thing to do and i did it I, again as you said i wanted to be a good example you know i had the 
burden of the you know weight of the people taking me as an example sometimes so I, I wanted to give the best I could to the people I was yesterday I was with my wife having lunch in the hotel here and she asked me what I had because I was literally having teardrops in my eyes because I was reading a message from a guy that had like almost a because we need to say these things you know just to make you understand almost a million followers okay and he sent me this audio message saying and I put it on the ear when we were having lunch and it was like uh, I saw he commented on one of my posts it was very fine, so I went to check and I followed the guy straight away because it was nice. I saw he was a nice guy with a family and stuff. And um, I listened to the message and it was like, dude, I'm so glad you liked my comment and you followed me. Like, I cannot explain how much I'm grateful for you. I built a family. I took you as an example. When I see you with your kids, I like get emotional all the time. Look, this is the photo of me and my family. Um, I was able to build what I have and sustain my family because of the inspiration you got for me. And he's an influence, fashion influencer now, no? And I got teared up because I, I was thinking like, imagine this guy, they saw me. And at the beginning, it was like, who's this crazy guy putting outfits on Instagram? What is he going to do with his life? You know, and he took me as an example and he was able to, you know, sustain his family because he's earning money on that. And at the same time, it was like, oh, so it's not that weird to have a girlfriend and a wife and a kid and a family. So he felt good about his feelings because it's his feelings. It's not that he did it because of me. And he went, you know, it went on and on. And I was like, I'm grateful for that. Thank God, because I, I could read that message. And I sent him, like, I told him, like, dude, thank you. Because, you know, this is what means a lot for me. It's not about, you know, of course, I'm happy to do every, all the things I do. I'm very glad. But, you know, this really gives value to what I did. And even if it goes up and down, I don't really care. You know, I, I'm, I hope that what I did in these years, if it goes for other 10, I'm happy. But what I did in this year left a good sign on people that I, that, I, that I met or they just saw me accidentally because, you know, again, because I'm there. I respect what you're doing, Mariano. Thank you, brother. Because it's, it's, it's very easy to follow trends. Yeah. Trends, maybe you want to be a playboy, you want to only look serious and cool and sexy. It's so easy. Everybody's doing it. It's harder to be true to yourself. Yeah, yeah. And if you're true to yourself, you're happy inside when you yeah. go to sleep at night. Yeah. Not because you're not trying to paint yourself or photoshop yourself yeah. in a certain look and I it's was, not easy i was yesterday with uh, one friend here i don't want to make names but we're you know we're confident and i'm like oh but you came with your wife we we're in the same hotel and i was like yes of course ah oh, so tonight no fun i was like what do you mean no fun <laughs> I, you know, we go to the party, you have girls. I was like, dude, I wouldn't do it anyway. But <laughs> I mean, you you have fun. You have a, you have good company. No, you had a friend, and he was like, why not? I mean, I mean dude, why why would I be with my wife if I, you know? But I mean, for some people, though, you know, for some people it's normal, and for some people it's a good example. For some people it's like I'm the weird guy that are like, oh, you could have all these chances. Why are you? Again, I hope that guy. Yes, I influenced him a little bit and saying like, oh. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll, I don't know. I'm, honestly, when I see myself from the outside, I'm super happy. If I see myself and the family and the stuff I have, I never regret it for a second. I never regret a chance that I didn't took, maybe on girls or fun or stuff like that. I'm super happy. And I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm 32. I have four kids. One of them is six years old. I can go play with him. I mean, I'm so happy. I just, I realize every day that I'm never be as young as I am today. So that's what pushes me all the time. I was like, I want to spend so much time with them. I don't want to get to the point when they're 14 and they don't want to stay with me anymore. So I want to work as hard as I can now to build a relationship with them. So I'm happy that I, that I could do all of this kind of early because my first kid I had at 27 and I got married at 26. So I'm super happy. I never regret it for a second. I wish all my friends, you know, like, I was like, dude, trust me. I mean, it's not a headache. I mean, of course it's a headache. Kids are a headache. But I mean, it's a good headache. I mean, it's the best thing you could have. So, I mean, that really, I don't know. That put the cherry on top of everything I was doing, honestly. And I didn't expect it. It's hard, Mariano. I'll tell you, look, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. that cheating has been normalized, yeah, especially for 100%. men. Women, maybe they feel more guilty now if they ever think of that. Yeah, men... Yeah. Like yeah, I'm no, a man. Of course. And they may, uh, But what does that even mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean it's okay to break somebody's heart. Especially yeah. if you want to leave, yeah. leave. Don't be married. Exactly. That's what you I know? say all the time. That's I'm what like, I say. Why all are the you time. there why if you're unhappy? You so yeah. I think it's too normalized. We, I have boys. You have boys. Yeah. I don't want to normalize it for no, my boys. Of course. I want them to. If it's a good woman. Hey, good luck. Commit. Yeah. You know, uh, do something. And it's the. It's hard to commit in anything, even food. We can all go out, everybody's eating, you know, chocolates and yeah. whatever, and you're like, I'll have one piece. Yeah, that's true. But I can't have more. No, no, everybody. 
okay. or drinking or whatever. It's hard to yeah. be disciplined. Yeah, yeah. And even marriage is discipline. Of course it is. Because you, you, so if I open your DM, I'm sure it's a circus. But then you have to be like, I'm good. Yeah. You know what? I'm good. Yeah. It's hard. And I think a lot of men, you said something interesting. A lot of men will think you're strange yeah, yeah. and someone will be like, man, he's my role model. Yeah, yeah. How can he, with all the temptations, how can he still say family first? Yeah. Not easy. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Sometimes I have my friends tell me crazy because my wife knows the code of my phone. It's like, why do you even put the code if your wife knows it? I mean, like, they didn't. They, I mean, do you really think they invented the code because people cheated? They don't need to show me. I mean, I think it was for another reason, but I mean, I mean, I have nothing to hide. I mean, of course, I'm tempted, as everyone is tempted. I mean, we're human beings, so, but that, that does, that's not the point. As you said, it's commitment. Uh, you try, you do your best, and you, you commit to things. I mean, I think it's a, uh, I don't know. I've always, I don't want to sound old school, but I always had the idea that wives shouldn't be left. I mean, of course, certain things happen, certain families. I don't want to judge anyone, no judge at all, of course. Uh, but I think, you know, wives shouldn't be left. If you don't want it, just don't do it at the first moment. But then, you know, again, I don't want to generalize because there's so many things happening in everyone's life. But uh, that's my idea and my opinion, honestly. And I think it's interesting because divorce became too acceptable. Yeah. Do I believe in divorce? Yes. There are abusive relationships. There's emotionally course, abusive. Exactly. There's physically abusive. There is falling out of love and they don't like each other. Okay. I'm a divorced man. I do support, but I also think it shouldn't be the easiest solution. Yeah, yeah. Like just you quickly quit. No. Yeah. You fight. Of course. You fight, you fight, you try it. If it's especially a good person, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work, I will respect it. But people quit too easy. Too easy, exactly. And it's not supposed I mean, to be I like that. I think the rate now is like, what, 50%? 50 to after, 60. Yeah, exactly. After them, of, half of them. <laughs> I don't know. Scary, huh? Out yeah. of two of your friends, one is divorcing. Yeah, exactly. It's I mean, crazy. And actually, I can, I, like, one of my, like, of, out of, like, four friends of my, like, small circle of friends, one of them got married after a year and a half already got divorced. And I was the best man. I was like, dude, and he asked me to be the best man for the next week. I was like, dude, <laughs> are you sure? I was like, I love you. I mean, the shit Another happens. Another question. Yeah. You, uh, I read a few things, so you have to tell me if it's mm -hmm. true or not. You left at 18. Mm -hmm. I know you went to New York. Mm -hmm. You got into fashion. You tried acting. I think you tried even taking a course or learn acting. Yeah, yeah, um, you were apparently homeless in New York. I don't know if this is true. <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, I mean, I, I, I didn't have a home for myself. I was living with other people. But okay. yeah, I was living in a hostel. So the question is, how did Mariano get to... In a, in a nice summary, how did somebody that left Italy at 18 get to where he is now? What was needed? Man, I say it to all my friends all the time and all the people that ask me, it sounds so stupid and so easy and we heard it so many times, but I guess, again, I want to go back to how important it is to raise your child a good way. My dad taught me, and I wasn't born in a, in a wealthy family at all. Like, my mom had a car to drive me to school. I was glad for that, but it wasn't the best car at all. It would stop all the time, just to make you understand. My dad, I was the least well-dressed guy at school. I had no fancy clothes. I had no money in my pocket. My dad wouldn't give me money once a month if I didn't cut the garden when they were able to have a house. So he, he taught me what you know the value of things were. So it taught me how hard it was to get things. And when I was working, whatever I was doing, because I started as a dishwasher in, in London, but I was the best at it. The best. Dude, I didn't know how to wash dishes. After a week, I was the best one at it. If you give me dishes, my ones would be the best. If I had to clean the floor, it would be the best. Everything I was doing, I was going to do it like, you know, to do it properly, you know, and that's, that's still the, the mindset I have today. You know, whatever I do, I want to do it the best. I started doing the fashion, uh, the Instagram thing. I was the best. I took the best photographers where no one was even knowing how to use the filters. I took professional photographers, video maker, and was having contents at this level. Nowadays, it's harder than it was before because all the content are like this. But when I started, I was already there and people were like, wow, is this dude doing these things? <laughs> you know, like those professional photographers and video maker, even at that time. But yeah, I mean, everything I was doing, I was doing top level. So I started from scratch. I had nothing. When I went to New York, uh, some people say I was homeless. I was living with the eight roommates. We were eight beds in a room in a hostel. It was uh, like very nice in Brooklyn. It was very good memories. But I mean, I was like living in not a very nice 
uh, situation. I think I have uh, $4 a day uh, calculated for my food and stuff. I was eating broccoli all the time because it was cheap and it will fill me up. So. But it was fine because I was studying at the New York Film Academy, which was a course that costed less than 5000 I remember, it's the money that I saved in London. So it was a, you know, I wasn't an adventure. For me, it was an adventure. I wanted to learn English. I wanted to study acting. I studied acting here and there with these small courses that I could afford. And um, so I was doing it very good. And when I opened the blog that I was in New York, to make it very short, it was a blog about movies and um, and fashion because it's the only two passion I had at the time because most of my time I was working, working, working and studying acting, acting, acting. And uh, when I did it, I started doing good. I started writing every day. I decided that they, that was a thing for me to, you know, to do. And, uh, and then I saw a reaction. And again, that thing that I was doing, I took it seriously. So I started understanding how could I invite more people to the blog? How could I invite more people to the fashion page? To my fashion fa Facebook uh, page where I was sharing the post of the blog, I found out that there was Firefox. Firefox had plugins. Plugins were able to, with a click, to invite all the friends you had. So I would put all my friends that I knew in London, that had a lot of people, a lot of friends, administrator of my page, get logged in with their thing, use the plugin, invite all their friends, put like on my page. So I grew like that at the beginning. And then, and then from that, I mean, that's for real. What I did, I mean, I used. I probably out, outsmarted, how do you say, outsmarted everyone? I mean, it, mm. wasn't a, it wasn't because I was the most good-looking man or the funniest or the better writer. I just used what I had, you know? Like, uh, so I had a lot of people coming and it's like, who's this guy? And I was, you know, writing good stuff. And from that, it, uh, some of them went to the blog, from the blog to Instagram. I was the first on Instagram. That's why I know uh, Sergio Ramos, uh, Jennifer Lopez, when I met him, I was like, oh, you're Mario, the Instagram guy, because when everybody downloaded Instagram, I was already there, and I was already there, like, on the Explorer page all the time, because I was doing it, uh, you know, with the with all the energies I had, so. What makes you this way? You're dead? I don't know, I think you, I think you are a little bit that way, I mean, you have to, because I'm not, a, I don't know, man, I don't know, I think it's a, it's a little bit how they raise you, a little bit how you are, because I don't think all my kids, I can see my kids are four, so I, I can see they're very different. I mean, maybe I can see some of them be very similar to me in some things, some others. So maybe if I put 10 different people in the situation I was, maybe maybe some of them would have done the same, some would have not. I don't know, man. I, I don't know what it is. I guess it's something that you have inside, or I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I can't answer that. <laughs> But it's, I guess it's a, it's a way to be. I like to be surrounded by people that know more things than me. I like to be the mm -hmm. dumbest guy in the room. I like to be in the, in the gym that has a lot of fit people and I'm the skinniest one, so I have to work harder. You know, that's the kind of feeling I like. If I'm in a room and in a gym, I'm the most, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do less. You know what I mean? So I mm -hmm. want to be pushed. I want to be... Uh, but that was probably the Mariano a few years ago. Now I want to relax a little bit more. But yeah, I guess... I don't know. Maybe a, a way to answer it for me to help you and you, <laughs> you help me <laughs> is we ask why. Why are you running? Why are you yeah, working hard yeah, as yeah, a father, exactly, exactly. as a husband, as a businessman, yeah. as an entrepreneur, as a fashion icon? Why? Why? You can just relax. You have money now. Yeah, yeah. So what's the why? Well, right now, again, right now, as I was saying before, I'm trying to do less things than do it good. Um, Run now is mostly, of course, some of it is passion because I love fashion. It's it's a good passion for me, and I, I I'm honest about it. Like I, I wake up in the morning and I'm happy. I'm gonna meet my stylist and my my designer. We're gonna be there, you know, making clothes. part of it. It's very passionate for me, but. Uh, there's a lot of it that I would love not to do it, you know, dealing with employees, dealing with all those headaches. There's like really stuff that drains my energy. I wouldn't want to do. So part of it is passion for sure. Part of it is for the family and part of it is for, I guess, yourself, you know, like you want to, you know, you still want to prove something to yourself You for, how do you say, your just for yourself, you know, you for your ego, you want to, you know, you want to build, uh, yeah, I don't know, you want to show the world you want to be, I don't know, honestly, <laughs> I feel I'm, I'm a, a, the psychologist, I don't know, probably it's for that, hmm. I don't know, I know why I started, I don't know why I'm doing it now, I'm, again, uh, of course, I can't just turn the lights off, and like, okay, now family, I'm just going to concentrate on family, you can, me, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I could, but yeah, I don't not? think you want to, no, no, exactly, exactly. On one side, I don't think I want to. I would love to have a little bit more balance. But yeah, no, I don't think I want to, honestly. I don't um, think I'm done yet. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, no. For sure. <laughs> I think, by the way, if I would assume, because mm -hmm. I don't know your life mm -hmm. well, 
you have hit 60% of your potential. Hmm. I think yeah, you have probably. a lot, yeah. a lot, because I can see the fire. Mm -hmm. There is fire. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's a bad thing that you're making six to four. Mm -hmm. Reduce mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. you want to focus more now. I'm doing the same with my yeah, business, yeah. as I told you, six yeah. to four now already. And we need to just make the best. Yeah. Focus on what really gives us a good feeling, yeah. a good return on investment, mm. and do the best. That's it. Yeah, true. true. What does uh, love mean to you? <sighs> I don't know. Love is happiness, I guess. That's what um, comes to mind when you say it. Because the love I feel with my kid, for my kids and for my family, which is probably the strongest love I've ever felt in my life, is it's just you know like a cheekbones goes up the, by itself. You know, it's just uh, I think it's peace and it's happiness. I mean, the, the real, real success in my head right now is being in a house full of love. Like that's what really is like. I don't want to have everything you can have in the world and having a kid that, you know, 14 years old doesn't want to, you know, talk to you or doesn't want to come on holidays with you. I mean, real success for me is, you know, being like those guys that I see that are with their kids and they're in their 50s and they're, they have their 20s kids that, they, you know, they like staying with them. So I guess that's the projection of what my what I want to have for my life in the future. So that's what's, what, what love drives me to do, you know, like I want to build with them because I think that's what, you know, gives me the fire inside. And I think, I think that, honestly, what God calls us to do, you know, build family, procreate, build families, and, you know, like, build good families. I mean, you, we can't just, you know, raise child and live, and live it there. Like, I mean, I think we have to do it the right way. That's probably the, the biggest business I'll ever have to build in my life as my kids, right? So, I mean, the biggest effort is, has to be given for them. And, uh and I have four, so that's why I feel I need to have more time for them. But yeah, I mean, I guess love, it's, uh, it's happiness. All around it, it has to be. What is the most important thing that you need in a marriage to make it work? Patience. <laughs> I wanted to say something else, but I'd say, I don't know, I'd say patience. I mean, I think the best decisions that we make and the best reactions that we make we make it in stillness. Does it make sense? Like when, yeah. when everything is calm and, you know, like in stillness. So I think you need to have a lot of patience in a marriage because sometimes we're really easy to uh, burn and uh, get crazy and get mad because, uh, again, a lot of stress that comes around with a lot of stuff. And, uh, and marriage is usually the the where you go and throw all your things. You know, that's what happens to me a lot of times. Mm. Like everything. you're stressed and you go home and you like just throw everything to your If she says the wrong thing, you're just like, oh, blah, 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 and you start fighting. So you need to have a lot of patience, I guess, mm -hmm. in your, in a marriage. And, you know, like you need stillness and, uh, you know, face every situation. But to me, the most important thing, and I've said it at my wedding, I've said it all the time. And again, I don't want to sound anything, but it's God. Like I've always believed in a marriage that is not made by two, but it's made by three. And in the Bible, it says that, you know, what it's built in three and it's as a knot done in three cannot be broken. And I really believe in that. And again, I, that, I think that's what keeps me, my wife and my family and, and, um, and will, I hope, strong together is the love for God. And I think that's what really gives me at the same time peace and, uh, and ease. Uh, not to be scared and not to be afraid all the time because I would love to, you know, I'm always traveling. I would love to protect and, you know, be for them and I have a lot of worries and stuff. But that what gives me ease and peace. It's a uh, solid love for God. And, uh, you know, praying for them is the only thing I can do. Praying with my wife. I always pray with my wife. I pray for my wife and for my kids. And I think that what's, I don't know, I feel we have a gear more for from a lot of people that don't. And I try to share with as much people I can with a lot of friends to, try to make them understand you know it's not a you know again it's not a weird thing it's not a it's a gear more it's something more than you can have in your relationship in your life with your kids with your family with your parents with everything and i think that drive me and helped me a lot of time a lot of time in my life man i remember so many times i don't remember many things i have really bad memory as i told you before but i remember a lot of times in my life when i found myself praying and I felt better when I was in New York, when I was in London, when I was a dishwasher all the time. And everything went to ease. I was like, okay, this is going to be fine. 
Uh, I can do it. I, I, you know, I'm not by my own. So that's what I felt all the time. And I guess what drove me through all the time was this. So. Before saying patience, what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say what I was going to say. I was going to say patience. What was the question again? So what is the most important thing that makes a marriage work? I was going to say, uh, how do you say, s sincere, like to be sincere, sincerity, how do you say, like... You mean sex? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's very important. To me. That's very important. To me. No, I was going to say... Sincerity meaning like... Like you have to be, like, uh, you have to be transparent with the other yeah, person. Yeah. I don't know the, what's the transparent. exact word. Transparency. Yeah, yeah, transparent. Transparent. yeah, yeah transparent. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you said good things. Yeah. Uh, of course, sex is important. <laughs> sex I is do think important. what you said, the patience <laughs> is underrated. Yeah. Because people don't like to use the word yeah. patience because patience might have a negative connotation. Yeah, yeah, but course. no, anything good mm -hmm. in your business, if you're not patient, yeah, no, no, of you would have closed yeah, your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a parent, if you're not patient, <laughs> you'll beat your kids yeah, yeah, or you'll ignore your kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think patience is a very good word and transparency. Transparency too, but it's, uh, it's, it's even probably a worse word to say. Because, they, you know, for a lot of people, transparency, as we said before, is not an easy word. Mm. You know, like to be transparent means to be honest and, you know, to, 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 to share all your thoughts or your feelings. Sometimes a lot of people don't take their partners or their best friends. Sometimes it's easier to be transparent with the, with your best friend because, you know, it's uh, maybe uh, your, your same sex so he understands your stuff and you, know, you can tell him things like that. But they don't, you know, they're not honest at the same time with their wives. And uh, I think it should be... Probably the other way around. Say less things to your best friend and a little bit more things to your wife. That would probably help the marriage. But I mean, again, I don't want to be in anyone's head. Uh, everybody has these different situations. But I, I mean, I think that helped me a, a little bit. You know, I try to have a transparent conversation and life with my wife. That helps me a lot. Like knowing that I have nothing to hide when I go to sleep and when we talk, it's like it put me again in ease. <laughs> Peace of mind. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't have to think about what I said yesterday, too, you know. Lying is tough <laughs> because lying you have to keep covering. Exactly. And if you have a shitty memory, exactly. like me exactly. and you, exactly. we're fucked. Exactly. So <laughs> doesn't <laughs> work for me. Doesn't work. Um, best moment in your life so far? Oh, man, because it's so deep. If you ask me, one like off. Four years Sorry, ago. one off. Probably the, 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 the kids being born. Hmm. I mean, uh, again, if you told me a few years ago, I don't know what would I would have told you. But right now, I mean, it's, it's like the kids, hmm. like uh, like when they were born, like all the good memories I have, like I can, can think of that they light up my head right now, of, of course, with the kids. So, hmm. I don't know. Opposite. Toughest moment for Mariano so far. Toughest moment for Mariano so far. Hey, toughest moment. Um, Oh, there's been a, I don't know, there's been a while, a lot, because um, when I've been uh, traveling a lot, uh, I think I was around 24, 25, I think I was married. Uh, I was traveling all the time. I was trying to take all the chances I had, so I was working a lot. I was going to, I remember it was a period that I went to Pitti Uomo, then a Fashion Week in Milan, then I went to Moscow, then from Moscow I went to Sao Paulo, from Sao Paulo I went somewhere else in Brazil. And I had the agents in the different countries. So I was doing all the interviews and stuff there. And after it was 37 days that I was traveling around, not being home, I felt sick in, uh, in, uh, in Sao Paulo. And they had to drive me back with the airplane. And they didn't want to put me in the airplane because I was, I was as white as my shirt. And uh, they made me sign the, the death thing in the airplane because I fell down on the floor. I couldn't stand up. I was just like, uh, you know, if I could stand up, I would fall. And I found out uh, I had a problem in my stomach. Uh, it was all the stress and the alcohol and the stuff I was drinking, you know, the stress, life, not eating healthy food and just drink all the aperitives and stuff. And um, so that was, uh, that, was, that was a hard setback for me because I went back to Italy. They put me straight in the hospital. I stood there for three weeks they wanted me to do the blood transfer but i was too young i lost like uh, three liters so i was with they told me like few days more and i could have gone who knows where because i was in the airplane so um that was probably a hard moment because i had to stop i couldn't post anything on social media and for me it was the the highest peak and i was like okay 
I to you know sit back there and say, okay, what's going on with my life? What what do I want to do? Uh, am I able to 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 keep going like this? Like you know, you feel you want to do a lot of stuff, but you know your body tells you like, dude. You know, I felt I was good. I felt I had all the energies. I could have gone out in 30 days. You know, I was excited. I was pumped. I wanted to destroy the world. And all of a sudden, bam, the day after I wake up, I couldn't get to the airplane. Uh, so that was a hard moment. And um, and it took time for me to realize that I had to, you know, I couldn't do everything I wanted to do. I had to slow down a little because uh, maybe I wasn't just born to, you know, go through all the stress. Maybe I was built different from other people. Maybe it was just... Uh, Maybe I just didn't handle it the good way. I was uh, again. I was having a uh, good discipline and good uh, commitment to a lot of stuff, uh, food, uh, diet, and stuff like that. So I was very easy to, you know, get lost. Uh, so that was probably a hard moment. I remember it as a like a bad part of a of a good year because it took me a lot of time to recover because to to recover all that blood naturally it took time so for like four or five months i wasn't like 100 percent until i got back to the level of like a regular uh, human being but so that was a that was probably a not very nice moment of my life okay so i'm going to use this other question it's very nice mm -hmm. but i need your imagination with me and i'll try to do it quick mm -hmm. um close your eyes mm -hmm. if you can imagine uh an empty blue desert <laughs> empty don't desert. think of Empty desert. And then, Mariano, you see a cube. A cube? A cube. Hmm. Can you describe the cube for me? It's marble white. Uh, it has the light from a side and it's dark on the other. I don't know. I how, just, how big is it? Uh, I can stand on it. It's like... Okay. It's, it's is it on big. the surface, inside, flying, floating? Where it's is it? It's on the surface. Maybe has a little bit... Uh, Sand. Uh, no, a little bit of uh, no the sand. I I don't know why. Uh -huh. I, I imagine the sand to be dry. You know those dry deserts mm. where they go with the cars and stuff. Mm. So I so imagine that this marble thing on a like a kind of a gold platform. Platform, yeah. Okay. A little bit smaller than the the box. Mm. Wow. Very okay. Good. After the cube. Mm -hmm. uh, th sorry, the cube is transparent or not? And you cannot no, no, see no. inside. It's marble. Okay. It's white marble with a little bit of. Okay, and then you see a uh, ladder. Ladder? Ladder. Ladder, Where? like the ladder? Of the the la no, ladder, the one you, ah, you use to climb. Uh, okay, ladder. Where is the ladder? It's longer than the cube and it's laying on the cube. It's just, this is the cube mm. and the ladder is just holding, like laying here, but it's longer than the cube. Got it. What is, what is it made of? Uh, well, like uh, it's gray, so I guess uh, iron. What is it? Okay, uh, like metal. Steel. Yeah. Steel. Uh, is it new or old? Uh, I think it's kind of like um, normal. It's just it's rounded leather. Like it's it's. I don't know. I think it's uh, not old. Not old, but not new. Medium. Yet. Yeah. Okay. After the ladder, Mariano, mm -hmm. you see a horse. Hmm. Where? How is the horse? How does it look like? Hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful horse. <laughs> it's a horse with the long hair. Is it still or is it moving? Anything I mean, you see. Okay, you I was I imagine it's moving and then I I put it still. Where is it? Because everything moving? else was still. Where was so it? So if moving? I'm watching the cube and the leather staying on it, the horse is here. Mm. Still. I imagine it coming this way, but then I stopped it. Where was it going? Away or towards? I think it was going like this. Mm. around okay i'd say okay um after the horse you see flowers <laughs> where oh wow i you know the horse was going like this mm. on that side of the horse okay next Not to the on horse this side yeah close to the horse yeah close to the horse a lot his, of flowers on his or right little? side a lot of white flowers, like uh, margaritas. I don't know how you call them. Yeah, the margaritas. Good uh, health or wilting? No, no, bad, beautiful. Beautiful health. Beautiful white, uh, soft, a uh, lot of flowers. So now when we're looking at this image that you have in your mind, you have the cube and you have the ladder on the cube and you have the horse running close to the cube, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's like and the flowers inches. are next to the horse? Uh, flowers are like uh, five inches from the feet of the horse. Okay, and the last thing you will see is a storm. Oh, God. Where is the storm and describe it? Ooh. In the background, there's like a mountain and the, the, there's like a thing and the, yeah, the, the storm is like a, 
great thing in the back coming. Okay, is it affecting any of those things? Not yet. Will it? Do you think it will come affect the cube or the ladder? I mean, it looks like it's coming straight. <laughs> Strong? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably. but at, so I far I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's like I don't know. As soon as you said storm, I imagined a little mountain. Hmm. So it's like the storm goes behind the mountain. So it looks like it's uh, you know I can see that kind of tornado hmm. on top. But there's this mountain on now in the picture. There's this mountain on part of the photo, and it's kind of like blocking the the tornado. But it looks like it's coming straight at it. Okay. Well, do we have the explanation? You're gonna enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> that was getting messy. No, you have a good imagination. I've done wow, this that was, I didn't think it was so mm. like. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's called the cube test mm. under a research by a psychologist, a Japanese one called Kokology. Kokology. Very interesting because it taps into your subconscious. So it's mm. not like you don't know why I'm asking all of this. Mm. So I'll tell you now. The cube is your sense of self or your ego. So you said it's a medium one. So you're between bold confident and willing to be seen you want people to see you and between an introvert shy modest quiet rather blend in than stand out you're in the middle mm -hmm. and i think it's right. your personality, I think it's my personality. okay right. you said it's standing on the sand so you're stable you know what you want from life and you intend to get it mm. very logical and very precise mm. i think we're very okay. wow. solid because you cannot see yeah. inside you know yourself and you're not easily manipulated and you're self-assured Okay. I like the Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladder is your family and friends. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and you said they're higher than the cube. So you value your friends and family very highly and you depend on them. Hmm. And you said like your happiness is your family. Um, so if it has many steps, you are a social butterfly. You have a lot of uh, fr a few friends and a lot of acquaintances. Few What's acquaintances? People you know. Ah, okay. Ah, Anas, yeah, I know yeah. him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know him, yeah, but yeah. not my I'm friend. Sorry. I don't talk to him every two days. Or um, Touching the cube, you're not completely dependent on your family and friends, but rely on them so for support and gu guidance at times. So you are an independent yeah, person. You, yeah, you'll yeah, solve yeah. issues, but sometimes you need their love and support. 100%. Okay. Horse, ideal partner. So you said she's very beautiful, your <laughs> wife. Technically, is very beautiful. And she was, um, uh, she was running towards the cube. So close to the cube signifies a close relationship. Hmm. So some people say, the horse is running far. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, you know, God. then you know. <laughs> Yours, she's coming clo hmm. close, which is good. Um, and you said the glamorous uh, horse. So you do value the outward appearance and you want someone that others also would approve of. Which is <laughs> not, because you said sometimes you have to think of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, moving towards the uh, cube, a sign of a new relationship or the strengthening of a bond of an older relationship. Mm. And now you've been a few years together. Oh, yeah, so. seven years. Yeah. yeah. It's flowers is your children. No way. Yeah. So you said it's um, near the horse. So your kids are close to your wife also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said um, near the cube, they weren't far. So it shows you wish for a close relationship with your children. And today, two to three times you mentioned, I want to invest in them. Because when he's 14, I want to be his friend, yeah. not a stranger. So this was interesting. Um, amount of flowers signifies how many children you want to have or you want to be around. <laughs> you know, yeah, it could be your family's <laughs> kids or whatever. Um, a vibrant blossoming garden or flowers reflects the health and prosperity of your children as well as your relationship with them. Hmm. So it seems you have a good nice. relationship. And the last thing is the storm. You said it's, it's far, so you are at more peaceful inner peace. However, the closer the storm, the closer the immediate threat. Mm. And you said uh, it's still not affecting any of the elements, which is your wife or your kids or your family. You consider the threat manageable and have confidence in solving it. If it does affect, you might currently feel overwhelmed by your problems and you fear the outcome more than the battle itself. Mm. And you said it's being blocked by something, but I'm afraid it's coming. Yeah, yeah. So I think you're in that phase where you can be overwhelmed with all your businesses and your family and whatever. And, but I think you are also confident you'll do, uh, solve it, but yeah. it can be overwhelming can be for sure. 100%. So that's the cube test. Wow, could yeah. be more precise. We could have done that and, <laughs> and could have then, done that and we knew everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I like to ask and then check. Wow. Because then crazy. I know how honest you are. Crazy. Um, last two. 
the um, if you have the blessing mm. and i do think it's a blessing if you have a blessing that on your deathbed you have your loved ones mm. and you have the blessing of choosing what you want to tell them what would you tell them and i'm dead no you're going to die but ah. you have a few words ah, to tell ah, them okay. what would you tell your family and your kids and ah i think i'll tell them we'll we'll see each other soon again i mean uh, that's what i would love to tell my like my my mom to tell me my dad to tell me so I, i guess that's what they will tell me and i would tell to my kids it's like just enjoy the rest of like life because it's beautiful because we'll we'll have a lot of time to spend together mm. so i guess that's what would put them in, i guess in peace in a better you know in a better i don't know mood <laughs> It's a good answer. Um, I'll add one more. Mm -hmm. If your kids, can you tell me their names? Uh, Nathan, uh, Liam, and uh, Noah, and Annabelle. There are four. Sorry, it's a lot of names. Actually, they have double names. So, just why did you. you get sensitive? Huh? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what was you asking me. Maybe because of the I don't know. It's beautiful, uh, Mariana, for a man. Mm. To have such a beautiful heart, you know, that you feel for your kids. I don't know. You make me think about me dying and <laughs> my kids and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. And yeah, yeah, no, no, it's a good thing. I love them. It's a beautiful thing. I wish I had the chance, as you said. Yeah, that's good. If um, your children mm. in 40 years mm. open this YouTube video, mm. what do you think is important for them to hear from you? And me and you would have been gone. <laughs> ah, that I love them no matter what. No matter, I mean, they, there's nothing they could do to, to earn my love. It's not about what they do. It's not about what they, you know, what they decide to do or what they have to prove me. No matter what they do, I'll love them anyway. So that's what's important. I mean, they have to live their life. I'll try to do my best to teach them what I can, but then they have to live their life. And I mean, it doesn't matter what they do, what they end up doing, what they achieve, what they don't achieve. As long as they stay true to themselves and they're happy and they, you know, respect others. I mean, whatever they do, it's like uh, I'll love them anyway. So nothing to prove. I guess that's what I, you know, that's what I'd love them to hear. Hmm. Finale, uh, Mariano in one word. <laughs> um, I don't know. First one that came to mind, it's crazy, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, myself, I describe it as a... One of a kind, unique, probably, because mm -hmm. I, I feel myself uh, not in a in a cocky way, in a in a like, as you said, uh, you know, I'm sometimes I look like this guy, but I'm a little more introvert, so I'm I'm not as easy to read as a lot of people think, and I think I'm very unique in my own way. So I guess it's a good thing. I'll add one more because you made me think of something. Do you think? You're more than a pretty face. You're more than oh, a handsome face. Of course. Because, you know, people see you from far, they can say, like, yeah, he's handsome. That's why he's successful. Yeah, no, no. of course I do. And when they tell me that, I tell them, oh, so you're saying that I'm the most handsome in the world. So because to have all this success, just because I'm handsome, that means I'm like more handsome than who? Like all the people that you know, I mean, not the most handsome, not even the more smart. I'm just trying to work out all things together, I guess. <laughs> Unique. I think there's way more to you than people know, Mariano. Mm. I, even me. I don't know you as much as I was at like, yes, we've had a family <laughs> dinner and all, yeah, yeah. but still. That was amazing. And th that's a, a beautiful thing that today yeah. I get to know you a little more as a friend, as a brother. But still, you know, it's beautiful that you're deep. You have so much to go inside and I don't think you even show it to no, people. No. No, it's hard, especially through, through, through media and stuff. I mean, mm. you can show barely, but. Thank I mean, you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And Thank I you. got to know you. <laughs> yeah, you know? for real.